The following is a Cruisers Motorsports exclusive. What's up everybody, Skywarp72 here with Cruisers Motorsports. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm a true believer that you can't laugh at others unless you can truly laugh at yourself. Humor is not a concept that is lost on me because after all, I own multiple Chevy Berettas myself. Yes, insert crappy old shitbox joke here, and also yes, I am a glutton for punishment. Being around the Beretta community for years, as eclectic, quirky, and random as it is, I've noticed there are certain different types of Beretta owners out there. Some are much like the owners in other car communities. Others, though, are a bit more eccentric. So here is a list of the nine different types of Chevrolet Beretta owners. But, first, if you would, reach over, click that subscribe button and the bell icon to stay up to date on everything Cruisers Motorsports is doing, and check out the description below for links to Cruisers Social Media, Merch, and if you should find yourself in a position to do so, become a Patreon member and a backer of the channel. I thank you all very much. Let's count them down. I'm going to start the list with The Shut-In. These are Beretta owners that don't associate with the rest of the world, much less the car or Beretta-specific communities online. Of all the Berettas I have bought over the years, I don't think I have ever gotten one from an owner that was, let's just say, on an even keel. Usually socially awkward, and knowing little to nothing about cars, these owners are usually giving up the idea of restoring it, and are usually selling it for something like to make rent. While definitely not in the majority of the group, it seems Berettas can attract some rather strange personality owners. Next up is the opposite of the shut-in, and that is the I know what I got owner. These owners sit on not only the cars, but parts too, and want overly inflated prices for them, and man, they won't budge. No matter the room that these said cars and parts are taking up, they are happy to sit on that stuff until the zombie apocalypse. I talked with someone one time that had a bunch of new old stock Beretta GTU parts, and while his prices were high, I was willing to pay for the parts I wanted. I even started asking prices on the other stuff that he had because I realized I could afford it too, but once he realized I was serious though, he just kept messaging me back saying, well good luck finding this part, they don't make it anymore. Uh, duh! Uh, hence why I'm not talking to my local Chevy dealership parts department, and I'm talking to your dumbass! Next up we have... The Casual. This is an owner, while, while they appreciate their old Beretta, and may even take a silent interest in the community, it's just a daily driver to them. You know, come to think of it, the Casuals may very well be the most sane ones of us bunch of Beretta guys. <laughs> Their cars are usually more cared for and more, the more clean examples of the remaining Berettas in the world. And while they may look back at it after they have parked it, they won't strike up a conversation about it unless asked. The Circle Tracker Since the early 2000s, the Beretta has been one of the main weapons of choice when it comes to flat track, asphalt circle track racing. While I've seen a few of these racers actually respect the rarity of the performance models, most of them tear through Berettas like demolition derby drivers tear through 70s Malays American cars. Most of which are after as little as a $50 payout to win, or worse yet, trophy only classes. I saw more than a few Beretta Indies gutted into race cars in the early 2000s. <laughs> Given what Indies are fetching now in price though, they gotta be kicking themselves that they did that for the measly payout that those racing classes usually have. The Parter. The Beretta forums and Facebook groups are a revolving door, and much of the turnover rate are opportunists that buy a beat up Chevy Beretta and are looking to make a few quick bucks by parting it out. Now, don't get me wrong, I've never considered the word profit to be a dirty word. However, these parters sometimes want to dismantle a Beretta that just needs minimal TLC. And while sometimes the community might be a little sore about it, 
these cars still end up being parted and going to the junkyard as they're worth more in parts than they are whole. The Guru Want to know the suspension code for a certain year Beretta? Want to know how many CLs were made in 1990? How about the steel thickness on a trunk lid? Well, you're in luck, because these guys can rattle it all off faster than the bidding on a Beretta Indy at auction. I'm stupid, you're smart. These particular car guys have dedicated their whole car passion to almost exclusively the Chevy Beretta, and their years of owning and repairing them has netted knowledge that every other Beretta owner is probably a little bit envious of. A few of these owners possess factory one-offs and concept cars, making them pretty much royalty amongst Beretta enthusiasts. The Retro Waver The dated trends of the late 90s and early 2000s car scenes, like overly bulbous body kits, ricer wings, and massive stereos, affected anything with wheels at the time. But the Beretta, it was no exception. <laughs> Most of the body kits and accessories that uh, went on to these cars went out of production 15 plus years ago, making obtaining them even more difficult than the hard to find stock parts. Every once in a while though, one of these old modified Berettas will creep up for sale in the forums and groups, and there seems to be a segment of the Beretta community that hold a deep appreciation for these dare I say, period correct modded cars. Much like the gassers of the 50s or the lowriders of the 80s, it seems less and less enthusiasts are laughing at these mods and appreciating them with genuine intent. In contrast to the retro waiver is the purist. These are the owners that maybe, maybe aside from a nice set of wheels and some dark window tint, believe that the lines and the looks of the Beretta were perfect from the factory, especially for the low number surviving performance models like the GTU, Indy, and GTZ. These owners will get their coil packs all up in a titty twist if someone modifies it in a way that detracts it from its original form and or function. Personally, I've found myself on both sides of this fence before. However, the fact the Beretta community is still large enough that it has this kind of dynamic is just a testament to the loyalty that these cars demand. Finally, last but not least, I offer myself up on the chalking block uh, and the other owners like me. The Hoarder. The Hoarder will have multiple Berettas, usually in one form of project or another, and usually not have just one that's top shelf complete, opting for a yard or even a garage full of them in varying conditions. These owners often break themselves financially or emotionally trying to restore too many of them at one time, which usually results in none of them ever getting done. Knowing how rare some of the parts are for these, hoarders usually stockpile these parts as well. Tail lights, filler panels, manual transmission shifter cables, and other difficult to obtain items usually line their garage shelves waiting for the next project to get done that hilariously probably never will. Oof, I'm hard even on myself. So there it is, the nine types of Chevy Beretta owners that I see today. Did I miss any? What do you guys think of the list? Do you own a Beretta and found yourself on the list here? <laughs> and all I can think while I'm out and about minding my own business is how I feel attacked. Let me know in the comment section below the video here. On your way down there, check the description for links to uh, more Cruisers content. And always, like and subscribe, my friends. Remember, those friends, they're the family you get to choose. I'll see you next week, fellow Cruisers.